Well, hello again. Uh, it is another lovely morning. Uh, day too many of a long shelter-in-place pandemic. Um, uh, I was trying to think of what might be useful going forward. And I, um, I've been studying the book of Philemon uh, in one of my seminary classes. And um, there was something I noticed in it that made me think, okay, maybe this is worthwhile to kind of look at. Um, in the Greek, there is a use of a prefix in, in a word, uh, and the prefix is soon. And uh, all it really means is with or together. Um, Paul uses lots of compound words with this, and I thought it might be uh, interesting to take a look at kind of his use of those words and maybe some other New Testament use of the word. Um, because I think in a lot of ways, this plays into the idea of how the gospel compels us to unity, to being together, to doing with. Um, and this is not, believe me, this is not the only way or the best way. Um, it just gave me an idea of one of those ways we can kind of walk together through a couple of ideas um, and, and just start our day thinking about how uh, God calls us through his gospel to a togetherness. Um, and today, well, I'm going to start by some of the things I saw from Philemon. Actually, Paul uses quite a few terms uh, that, that would bring, that kind of talk about together or with. Um, and it, it's in his greeting and, and his, his, and his, uh, his final greeting or, or salutation. Uh, so it says this in uh, verse 2. Um, actually, I'll start with verse 1 and a half, so to speak. To Philemon. To Philemon our beloved fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. So that's one of the references. And then at the end, he says this, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you, and so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. So you see that there's this idea of fellow something or other, right? Fellow prisoner, um, fellow soldier, um, fellow worker. Um, and uh, if you take and start looking at these throughout the New Testament, especially in Paul, uh, it's amazing how much he uses these terms and they should draw us to a level of unity. Again, there's a, a lot of other vocabulary in Greek and a lot of other ideas that would bring you to an idea of unity. Paul talks about it specifically, but we're going to take a little bit of a different look at it uh, and see what this might kind of reveal to us. So in this case, it talks about fellow workers, that last reference. Paul, as he's concluding this very personal letter, says, Hey, um, all these people are greeting you. They're all sending their greeting to you, our fellow workers. And it's, uh, the term is uh, sunergos. Uh, and it's pretty easy. So it's soon with, work together, ergos, um, which is work or labor, or that type of thing. Um, so you have to think, okay, so Paul sees the people that's working with him as co-laborers, um, as people who work with him, work on what? That's what you have to ask is what kind of worker are they just like working together? Paul, we know Paul did some tent work. So are they all tent makers? Probably not, no. These are all gospel co-workers. They're people who, who are on the same mission that God has appointed them to. They are, sent, they are compelled by this very same gospel, pushes them forward to do the work. And that work may look different for each of them, but they do it together, right? Their gifts come together in this wonderful symphony. Um, and I think it's a really good way to start our day. Are you co-laboring? How about with the church? You know, in a time like this, it's hard. You guys probably look at a lot of us in leadership and wonder what we're doing. <laughs> you know, sometimes I do too. It's, it's a difficult time. It's a time when um, we want to be uh, glorifying God through the gospel. We don't want to put any other offenses or any kind of obstacles to the gospel for the, the culture around us. But at the same time, we want to get back together. We want to be a church. We want to, to hug and love one another and, and be present with one another. And we can do that in some ways. Um, you know, we have some ability to do some counseling and so forth. And I know that Zoom calls don't necessarily fit the bill. But how are you co-laboring on this day? Maybe it's with family. 
maybe it's actually with work. Some of you are actually essential business, so you get to go to work and and kind of uh, work out your gifts in that way. Are you co-laboring in the gospel there? Maybe there's no one to co-labor with, but you have a king who's with you all the time. Maybe you're just home like me. I mean, I get out of here every now and then. We have meetings with the, with the church leadership and so forth. Um, but when you're home, are you co-laboring for the gospel? It's probably a pretty important point. What does that look like? Think about that today. What does it look like when I'm stuck at home? How do I co-labor for the gospel? Because it is work. It's heavy lifting, not in the sense of... Um, <laughs> It's something that's salvific, that brings us salvation. No, 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 no. But it is hard. In our last series, we talked about thorns and thistles. Yeah, we've got lots of thorns and thistles, sometimes in our own homes, sometimes in our workplaces, sometimes in our relationships. What does it mean to co-labor in the gospel? Well, at the bottom of it all, you have to consider that Jesus did the heavy lifting for us. He, he worked it out for us. You have to start there. You have to start at the cross. Jesus resolved all of the work that I could not get done. Every project I could think of that I did a poor job at or I just couldn't complete well. He's resolved the biggest ones that you didn't do. Such that all of your future work has this blessing and a carrying with it that he goes with you. So today, understand that your king knows what heavy lifting is it all about. He did it all on our behalf. So I, I pray that your work might seem a little bit lighter, but at the same time, you would recognize that, no, no, the gospel compels us to this co-laboring with one another, loving on your church family, loving on your blood family, loving on your neighbors, your enemies. Pray with me. Father God, uh, we thank you for this day. We ask you to help us in the middle of this co-laboring. Help us to find ways of, of co-laboring, of building the other up, of not, not just looking for our own desires or not looking to, to just prove our own point, um, but that we're looking to lift up your name, lift up the deeds of your son, point to the cross, the goodness of, of the one who would sacrifice for all of us. Help us to look to you, to recognize your presence, but point to you as well as we co-labor for the gospel in all of the contexts in which we inhabit. We love you on this day, and we want to just, we want to praise your name. We want to honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. So go do that. Go co-labor today.